The purpose of this demonstration is to provide a high-level platform overview and give you a sense of what it is like to operate a Session Smart network. As we hop into our Juniper Session Smart router deployment, let me take a moment to introduce a few components of the architecture we'll be looking at. In a typical deployment, Session Smart routers are distributed across the network topology, client to cloud, participating with other traditional routers to form the WAN. The SSRs function as a tightly integrated control plane and forwarding plane element and are orchestrated by a management element called the conductor. The conductor has several key functions. It provides a single pane of glass for administration using graphical and command line interfaces. It hosts a centralized API for all devices, which integrates easily into third-party platforms for management and automation. This provides access to the thousands and thousands of rich analytics and metrics. Also, it delivers config and lifecycle management for all the SSRs. Let's log in and take a look. Users can be authenticated based on locally provisioned accounts or from a central authentication provider, such as LDAP or Active Directory. Upon login, you are first greeted with a dashboard page. This page is a launchpad to all different areas of the product deployment. In the upper panel is an indication of the quantities and health of all SSRs under management. To the right of that, you get an alarm summary. Next, the configuration overview shows if there are any active changes that require attention. Finally, in the upper right section is the overall health of the conductor itself. The side panel on the left gives launch points into various functional areas and stays consistent through the whole user experience. Next, let's go to the topology page. Unlike other SD-WAN solutions that require specific fixed WAN topologies and only work with bookends like Hub and Spoke, SSRs can form highly flexible and diverse topologies. For example, in this deployment, we have routers sprinkled across the globe. Zooming in on a hub site, you can see lines representing connectivity to branches as spokes. This hub is labeled as HA because it operates as a logical router with multiple devices for redundancy. Also worth noting, the colors of these routers have meaning. For example, the hub icon is colored blue, indicating it is healthy. The orange color of the branch router here means that they are currently in maintenance mode, thus suppressing any associated alarms. Panning over to the west coast, in Seattle we have a branch router forming a mesh with all other US branch routers. This same WAN interface that acts as a spoke to the hub is also meshed with WAN interfaces of these other branches. Now, let's take a look at this branch router in Seattle. On the main router page, you get an at-a-glance overview of traffic and health. We can see a snapshot of current sessions and bandwidth information. Our Seattle branch router is running the 5.1.0 software version with four configured network interfaces. Next, we have our node. A node is simply a physical or virtual device powering the logical router. This branch is operating with a single node. It is possible to have multiple nodes clustered together to form the router, such as the HA hub we looked at previously. The current status of node resources are seen here, including CPU cores for control and management functions, as well as a single core dedicated to packet forwarding. This CPU core allocation is typical for small to medium branches, but can be increased for higher performance at larger sites. Our node has been up for four days, and from a lifecycle management perspective, the asset is in a running, steady state. To give some examples of other asset states a node could be in, you may have things like stopped, starting, or upgrading. An overview of the Layer 3 network interfaces shows up-down status. They are all up in this case. It also shows static or dynamic IP addresses associated with 
each network interface. In this configuration, they are all statically configured. The physical layer 2 device interfaces are also shown along with their up-down status and associated MAC addresses. You can also see this node is not using interface redundancy as it is standalone. Moving to the bottom of the page, you can see the other SSRs that this router is peered with. SSRs form a topology with one another based on layer 3 IP reachability, giving them potential next hops for routing sessions. As they are made aware of other peers' reachability from an interface, they begin to monitor path reachability and performance. Here we see discovered properties of a path, including latency, packet loss, jitter, MOS, and MTU. We can also use this to control the process lifecycle of the SSR node. For tasks where a command line interface is handy, or for those who prefer CLI, a remote CLI session can be launched from the conductor. The CLI offers a text-based interface with near feature parity to the GUI. For example, let's look at the same system status information that was presented in the GUI. Next, let's look at the device interface status on the node. For those familiar with Linux, a traditional shell to the system is available as well, where you have many of your favorite Linux tools at your disposal. Heading back to the router page in the GUI, let's look into the traffic the SSR is seeing. Using DPI-based application identification methods, you can see a variety of domains for which sessions have targeted. Here we have some sessions going to ESPN, CNN, Juniper, and others. So let's look deeper at the top sessions consuming bandwidth right now. At the top, we have a graph of total bandwidth for the router plotted over time. In the table below, we have the current top bandwidth consuming sessions. Clicking in on an individual session, you get the most detail from the SSR. You can see things like session type, the service class for quality of service, and the security policy applied to the session. You can see that this particular session is being sent to the Boston data center peer and the TCP state is established. All the details for when you need to look at a session under the microscope. Best of all, you can click to different points of time in the bandwidth graph when you see something interesting and the table below updates for top sessions for that point of time you have selected. Every session you see on the SSR is ultimately going to be destined for a service that is important to your business. Here we see some of the analytics that are devoted to our corporate internet service. Services group one or more applications into a named service that is distributed to the routers managed by the conductor. All destinations described by the service can be given their own routes and policy for things like path selection, security, access control, and SLA. For example, here you can see the multiple different paths that make up the route for the corporate internet service. At the bottom, you have the security policy that will be applied and the service policy, which will prescribe how routers will treat sessions based on service level agreements, load balancing, and quality of service. Services may represent many applications in a large network block, such as our corporate internet service, or LAN prefixes in a branch or data center. They can also describe individual applications like SaaS or custom apps in a data center or private cloud. Heading over to the services page, we can see some of the other services that have been named and given discrete policies. Who exactly can access these services are shown here. Network devices are segmented into logical groupings called tenants, and all devices belonging to that same tenant will have the same level of access to services. Here you can see devices segmented into tenants such as engineering, finance, sales, and guest, and we can easily inspect the services any particular group of devices can access. 
Throughout the conductor so far, we have seen how metrics, statistics, and analytics provide deep insights depending on the functional area you are looking at. But how about when we want to customize? The SSR provides thousands of different metrics and analytics, and it can all be viewed in customizable dashboards. For starters, the conductor provides many built-in managed reports, such as the SVR comparison tool. This calculates annualized total savings of the SSR's tunnel-free technology versus other tunnel-based SD-WAN solutions. This analyzes traffic data from all managed routers and compares the data overhead of SVR to the tunnel overhead from typical SD-WAN. For this deployment, the tool projects over two terabytes of data will be eliminated by going tunnel-free, eliminating congestion, and saving available bandwidth for the best possible user experience. An alternative comparison is available for contrasting the savings against DM VPN solutions as well. For detailed explanations of the calculations behind the numbers, you can check out the help text or go to the product documentation. Another built-in report shows data collected from monitoring all available peer paths on a given SSR. For this router, the latency on paths to its peers is low and no loss has been measured in the past 30 minutes. You can expand the time window to show data from farther back in time as well. Going back two days, small fluctuations are seen, but no major abnormalities. You can select a specific data series at the bottom of any graph to filter out other plotted lines. Now, let's use this report as a basis for a new custom report. After giving it a name, we can now fully customize the report. Here, we resize and rearrange the layouts of the charts. You can also create reports from scratch by selecting a new empty report. Let's make one showing MOS score or mean opinion score and values over time observed for peer paths of a router. These are just a few of the thousands of analytics collected by the session smart routers throughout their life cycle. Speaking of life cycle, the conductor also plays a key role in managing the software lifecycle of each router in the deployment. Going to the routers page on the left panel, you get a listing of all routers managed by the conductor. From here, you can check for the availability of new software. In this example, you will find updates are indeed available. Selecting a specific version, it shows routers that can download the new version before upgrading. You can also see routers that have already downloaded and are ready to upgrade. You can select individual routers to download or upgrade, or you can select from a handful of bulk operations. Once the selection is made, simply click Start and the conductor will orchestrate the task. As you've seen, those are some of the highlights of key functions and workflows in a typical deployment of session smart networks. As session smart routers are placed across the WAN from client to cloud, the conductor centralizes and simplifies many operational tasks for routers in deployments both large and small. Thanks again for watching.